Hey guys, I've seen a few people sharing some cool um, sculpted environments made in Photoshop. And this actually isn't new to the new version of Photoshop. You can do it in older ones as well. Uh, I'm doing it in CC17 here. I just thought it'd be cool to quickly go through it because it's a really fun technique and has a lot of practical uses, I think, for quick concept design and stuff like that. So if you don't know how to do it, here's how you do it. So we're in Photoshop here. Photoshop now has 3D and has had 3D for ages, so I don't know why I said no. But the concept, the thing we're going to be working with today is uh, something called a depth map. So a depth map basically is something we'll use to create 3D topography. It's really easy to do in Photoshop, which is awesome. The basic concept is you draw a thing, whee, it takes the values of the image with dark being uh, low, like so it'll uh, sculpt in and light being high so in fact if I do a really quick example could obviously just do this with a gradient but we seem to have started this way um, so what we're going to find is if we make a depth map out of this image here we're going to get a cool a real cool 3D object with there you go. With depth like that. So uh, if we orbit around, you can see that the black has burrowed in and the white has projected and sort of extruded out. And we can mess with the depth and the height and stuff, but I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. I just wanted to give you a very quick example of what I'm talking about here. So, why is this cool? In case it wasn't obvious. Well, it's really powerful for creating quick 3D environments, as I was saying. If you want to create landscapes for your pieces, you can, uh, you know, draw something out here. Um, with some sort of variety to it. But let's just use soft brushes for now. I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk a bit about specific uses and also like some suggestions in a minute because there's some stuff that this works really well for. Uh, and there's some tools that work really well with this technique. But there's also some stuff that just doesn't work very well at all. I'm going to suggest some stuff to kind of get around that. But uh, yeah, for example, if we wanted to do this really quickly, again, I'll go into more depth about like the actual technique in a second. Uh, you can see in seconds, we just created a real cool kind of environment. So that's the basic concept. Draw in black and white make it 3D, have a lovely time. Um, I will now show you the actual steps that we're going to take and also some suggestions. Here are two that I made earlier, um, just, just to prepare something. The first is environment. So there's a few things going on that I wanted to mention here. Anything that has a harsh edge is going to project very harshly, like a canyon, almost like a ridge, because all it's doing is um, it's taking You know, if we have like a hard edge next to this, when this comes out in 3D, obviously, it's it's pr it's a pretty dramatic cutoff. So we're going to get a really dramatic edge, which is cool for some stuff. You're going to get cool, you know, like a, a sort of indent sort of uh, effect here, which can be awesome. But it's a bit harsh, which is why I would suggest making use of some soft shapes as well. So as soon as you start softening these edges off, you're going to get a better fall off on your uh, on, on your edge because obviously it's you know it's a gradient rather than being pure dark to light. That's going to work much nicer. Also, I would recommend not going into extreme values generally because it's not going to feel natural. Now that can work obviously if you're doing like a prop or something like that. Although again, I probably wouldn't do that in, in Photoshop. Um, but if you keep the kind of value range relatively constrained that's going to give you like a more natural uh, landscape you can see that my values are much clustered in the center which is exactly what I want so to go through the actual steps in detail rather than just skimming over them new mesh from layer is what we want depth map 2 so we're creating a depth map now I've been doing plane up till now which will just create a flat plane and push the uh, you know the forms onto it 
You can also do uh, a solid extrusion, which is really nice. That's going to basically push it out of a block that it creates. Now everything's a bit like high poly and kind of messy in Photoshop. Um, so I, I mean, you could you could take it into other three D programs and and mess with it, but I imagine you'd probably have to reduce it a bit. But if this ever loads, here we go. So here's how that looks. Now. You'll notice I'm using these tools here to move around. That's purely because I really don't like the way Photoshop handles um, moving around the environment. I'm trying to like use the Photoshop tools as little as possible, and this seems pretty easy. To show you what's going on here, we've basically switched to the 3D workspace. Um, usually you'll be on Essentials probably, or something you've customized yourself, but we switch over to the 3D workspace. I've actually set up um, shortcuts to switch between these, Shift F1 and Shift F2, um, which obviously you can just do through the through the shortcuts bit. If you go to application menus, um, it's in here somewhere. Windows. Ah, you'll find it. Um, but that's just so I can quickly switch between the two, which I find quite helpful. Um, so if you check out these tabs alongside your layer tab, as you'd expect in Photoshop, which is this. You also have uh, this new 3D setup, and this is where all your stuff is, the depth map itself. We click on that, that's going to bring up our tools, which is really useful because what you might want to do is, for example, scale the z-axis to mess with the height of this. So we go back, there's our image, and we can scale it as much as you want. Now this is where you're going to notice that like the textural stuff starts to get real noisy, like you see in here. This kind of information here is just kind of a mess. Uh, also on a side note, I find Photoshop really intensive um, it, when working in 3D. This is not a massive file, but um, moving around it and editing it is pretty slow. And this is on a you know machine with like 32 gigs of RAM and a GTX 980, so it's not exactly a slow machine. So that's just something to bear in mind. It can get a bit sluggish. But yeah, you can see here that like, the flatter areas are working out real nice. Um, but as soon as we get textural, it because it's relatively low res, it's kind of coming out as a bit of a mess. Um, we have a light here by default, so we can mess around with the lighting of the scene, which is real cool. Actually, let's just reduce that depth a little bit because it's kind of a mess. And we can also, in here, we can look at the materials. This is really cool because we've got stuff like our bump map, for example. If you want to load an image, just load in an image. New texture, load texture. Let's load a let's load a texture. Let's load this Sonic. Beautiful. So now I've got a beautiful Sonic bump. Now, if you wanted a more practical use for this, you could obviously load in you know something like a landscape. Um, or just something with some noise. Generally, with bump maps, you just want like a nice value range. And that's going to help you out. We can change the colors of our diffuse. And we can also load images into this and edit the texture. So editing the texture is going to bring up our original image. Or just, just a black shape. Why not? But if we draw on top of this, that's exactly what I wanted to see. So there we go. We go back into it. I, I again, don't understand Photoshop at the best of times when, when playing with 3D. So apologies if that didn't make any sense. But hey, you can add some textures on top of it. You can also paint directly on top of this, which is really cool. Um, just be prepared for it to be a little bit slow. It's not as fast as something like 3D Coat. Um, but once you're happy with whatever you've done, you've added your awesome Sonic onto it, you can just switch straight back to your other workspace. And here it is, just as a layer. And um, we can mess with it as usual. You can rasterize it if you want to work on top of it. So rasterizing is just going to turn it into an image. And it's just a regular good old fashioned image. You can draw additional sonics on it if you want. I don't know how to draw sonic. So that's a really quick overview. Um, other ideas here. It's great for things like cities. Again, try and make sure your values are relatively clean. I just created a couple shapes and duplicated them a bunch. Uh, and that's gonna give you 
Um, let's do flame. Yeah, that's going to give us some kind of nice building shapes. You can go crazy on detail here and just have a really great time. Uh, but just for the purposes of this example, I want to show you some basics. So as you can see, it actually worked out pretty good. Again, if we want to, we can go in, click on there, mess with our uh, Z axis, which is obviously the height of it. Um, or not, because Photoshop hates writing well. Mess with your lighting, you know, beautiful. So yeah, um, anything, as soon as you use texture brushes, you're gonna get that issue with um, detail. So good ways to get around that, obviously just to use pure um, tones. Uh, and then if you want to, you could use a smudge brush, for example, to soften it, or um, do a bunch of, you know, do a bunch of your values. I, I, I like to um, pick, a, pick a tone and then drop the opacity down to create like pools of, of tone and then I'll go 100% again just to kind of clean them up because again you don't want stuff overlapping too much because it gets like a bit messy like this is going to build up nicely uh, and then if you wanted to smooth it off you could use a smudge tool smudge it or alternatively uh, you could go up and uh, chuck some Gaussian blur on it Gaussian blur. so that's going to give you that kind of softness uh, and, and really a lot of this is just like experimenting and seeing what works uh, Custom custom shapes are really good here. So, for example, these are some of Sparth's um, shapes. And what's nice about them is again, you're going to get that pure 100% uh, color that you've you've chosen or value, sorry, that you've chosen. But again, you may just want to do the same thing. So, like that's going to be really harsh. Whereas if we put it here and just kind of smooth it off, you're going to get better transitions. I'll, I'll just show you quickly what that looks like. You can see this one's very harsh, um, as we'd expect. And then this one has obviously more of a gradient. Now, it, it does tend to go a bit crazy when you first go in. So I do like to, as we've seen already, just pull that back a bit by scaling along Z. Yeah. So yeah, you can see. Ugh. So the one on the above just indents a bit more, which is nice. Um, so other things to try. I mentioned like some, some good additional tips. Filters can help you out here. If you create a bunch of sort of textured, textural stuff, you know, like this. Uh, and let's say you're doing a map design. Uh, you're, you're laying out a map and you, you want to you wanna do that, but you're worried it's going to be too messy because those textures are just going to turn into you know huge spires. Uh, you could go into filters and mess around there. There's, you know, cutouts going to obviously reduce. Your, you finally get a use for these filters. Um, it's going to reduce the information quite a lot and give you more stylized shapes. Um, actually, pretty much a, a few of these can be useful. Your stamp, I think, is, is, is going to be pretty good. If I could remember what it was, because I never used any of these filters. Chrome, that would be intense, let's face it. But the nice thing about it is, uh, there's there's stamp as well as I can The nice thing about it is you you know experimenting can give you really interesting results. Um, I've messed around with photo textures. That's quite interesting. Um, again, you tend to get the issue with things being too high res, uh, sorry, too uh, messy. But like this, for example, is going to give us canyons. But what happens, for example, if we really blur it? Because as soon as we do this run our little uh, action that I've created. This should give us like a fairly naturalistic undulating environment. There's, to be honest, there's too much white here, so it's gonna be really intense, as you can see. Um, and we can go in and fix that, or just, come on, there you go. Yeah, so there we go. Simple kind of base and 